Okay, let's talk about cylinders. And of course, this shape right here, hopefully uh, you're familiar with, and this is an example of a cylinder. And what we're talking about is the volume of a cylinder. And specifically for this particular problem, I want to know what this, uh, what 60% of the volume of this particular cylinder is. So how do we do this? Well, I'm going to give you an opportunity to figure this out. You're definitely going to have to know some uh, formulas about uh, circles and cylinders. That's a little bit of a clue, but I'm not going to give you any of that yet because I want to see how many of you actually remember how to do a problem like this. Not that difficult, but again, it's going to require you to remember uh, some basic formulas and some of these formulas I mean, there's a lot of formulas in mathematics, uh, a lot, you know, that's impossible to retain all these formulas, especially the more advanced formulas. But the, uh, the formula for the volume of a cylinder is something I would suggest that you want to put into your long-term memory. So if you want to go ahead and give this problem a shot, again, I'm looking for 60% of the volume of the cylinder. Go ahead and put your answer into the comment section, but I want you to be aware of a little tiny detail, okay, that uh, if you just put in the number, okay, I'm going to just tell you right now, I'll probably say at least 25 to uh, 25 to 50% of you are going to make this error, okay, I want the exact precise answer, put that into the comment section, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about here, because I'm going to show you the answer in just one second, but uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. And I'm telling you right now, you can be successful in math. And I'm especially speaking to those of you that have a tough time learning math. What you need is great math instruction. That's clear, understandable, and comprehensive. Okay, So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level, check out my math help program. You can find a link to it in the description of this video. I promise it will help you out big time. Also, if you're preparing for any sort of test with a dedicated math section, many of you out there are going to be taking a test like this. You don't even realize it. I'm talking about entrance exams, placement exams, certification exams, uh, things like the SAT, ACT, uh, ASVAB, teacher certification exam. Maybe uh, if you're going to college, almost all of you will have to take a test like the Alex or AccuPlacer to test into your respective college courses. Anyways, I have a ton of test prep courses that can help you uh, prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, check out my award-winning homeschool math courses for middle and high school mathematics. If you need a pair of great uh, math notes, I'm going to leave links to mine in the description of this video, but hopefully you're taking awesome notes yourself. If you are not, you need to start learning how to do this immediately because this is one of the secrets to doing well in mathematics. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as this definitely helps me out big time. Okay, so here is the problem. If you want a little bit more time to work on it before you see the solution, just pause the video, but I'm going to show you the answer right now. Okay. All right. So here it is 60% of the volume of the cylinder. We can kind of express this in two different ways. The exact answer, and I did kind of mention that if I wanted the exact answer, it would be 27 pi millimeters cubed. Now I bet you a lot of you put your answer as 27 pi or you can use as an approximation of pi, let's say 3.14, the decimal uh, approximation, and just take that 27 times 3.14, and you come up with 84.78 approximately. This would be an approximate answer, but I bet you a lot of you forgot to add in your units of measure. This is a big no-no uh, in mathematics and in science. If you just put 27 pi and you forgot your units of measure, you will get uh, points taken off from most uh, science teachers, most math teachers. So don't forget, units of measure for volume is what? Cubed, okay? So because our height is in millimeters and our radius here is in millimeters, so you know, let's just kind of do this right here. Length or distance, this is like just a linear uh, kind of unit of measure, millimeters, right? But if we're doing with, this is like one dimensional. If you're dealing with two dimensions like area, okay, what would be our units of measure? Well, it would be millimeters squared, okay? Because let's just do a quick review. I'm just taking some time here. If I have 10 millimeters here and two millimeters here, and I gotta multiply this, let's say this is a rectangle, this is gonna be this times this, it's millimeters times millimeters, or you end up with millimeters squared. For volume, okay, you're gonna be multiplying, uh, you're gonna be squaring and then multiplying again, you're gonna see the formula. So 
just remember when it comes to volume, uh, it's cubic units of measure. So that's a, a very important little detail that you don't want to forget. And I wanted to stress this right now, just in case some of you um, had the right number, but you didn't have uh, the right unit of measure. But guess what? Even if you had the right number and you forgot the unit of measure, I'm still going to give you an awesome happy face, an A plus and 100 percent for getting this problem right. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you a few stars because, you know, uh, you want to feel a little bit extra special today uh, for being awesome in math. But if you don't understand this, stick around and uh, I'm going to explain exactly what you need to do. And again, to solve this problem, you're going to need to know uh, the formula for the uh, volume of a cylinder. Okay, it's not that difficult in terms of the math, but you, if you got, if you got the um, if you forgot the uh, formula, or um, then obviously you need that to solve this. Also, a lot of you out there may have calculated their entire volume, but forgot to take 60% of that. That's another common little mistake. So if you made that little error, not, not a big deal, but you got to really be paying attention with these type of problems. That's why I do these little videos to kind of highlight all these little errors. Let's get into the solution right now. And let's talk about the volume of a cylinder. Basically two ways you can uh, think about the um, uh, formula for the volume of a cylinder. This is probably the most common way. So the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared times the height. What is pi r squared? Pi r squared is simply the area of the base of the circle. Okay, so uh, you can also express the volume of a cylinder as a volume is equal to the base, where base is the area of the circle times the height. Of course, the area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. Okay, and pi is that lovely irrational number, probably one of the most, or the, uh, could very well be the most important um, number in mathematics, is approximately 3.14. And just a little more information on pi, we say approximately, and we use this symbol for pi because this number goes on and on and on infinitely, and it's what we call an irrational number. It doesn't repeat and it doesn't terminate. So to write the entire number number out, not number, <laughs> number, okay, it would take infinity and that's a lot longer than I have. And uh, so we're like, you know what, we're not going to do that. We'll just give this a nice little symbol that represents this number. But if you want a decimal approximation, uh, the more decimal places of pi you use, the more accurate your answer, your approximate answer will be. You could pull this number up, uh, pi the a uh, pretty good um, approximation of it in your calculator as well. But most teachers are going to be okay with you using 3.14 or the fractional equivalent 22 sevenths. Okay, so this is the formula that you need. Volume is equal to pi r squared times the height. Now, if you want to try the problem again, okay, here it is. Here's the height. The height is 5 uh, millimeters. The radius is 3 millimeters. And I want to have 60% of the volume. So what do we need to do? Well, obviously, we need to find the entire volume and then take that uh, number and uh, find 60% of it. So basically, I'm just telling you exactly what to do if you want to try this problem on your own. But let's go ahead and actually do this right now. Okay, so here again is the formula for the volume of a cylinder. So the volume is going to equal to pi r squared. So I'm just going to write pi. No need to put this in into a decimal. Just leave it like this, pi. And the radius is what? The radius right here emanates from the center. It is 3 uh, millimeters. So that's going to be 3 squared. Okay, so this is this part of the formula right here. And I got to multiply by the height, which is 5. Okay. And for right now, when I'm doing these calculations, I'll just... Uh, uh, leave these units of measure um, out, but I got to put those back in and my final answer. So what do we have here? Three squared, remember, order of operations, got to do powers first. This is nine times five, which of course is 45 times pi. So 45 pi millimeters cubed is the volume of this entire cylinder. Okay, so if you got that right, or if you actually put this down as your answer and you just forgot to take 60%, you know, that's still very, very good. So now we need to um, go ahead and take 60% of this number. So of course, hopefully, you know your basic percent and let's go and do that now. Okay, so how do we find 60% of a number? Well, you simply take that uh, percent and you convert it to a decimal. So 60.0%, remember, 
What do we do? Well, you want to scoot that decimal point two places to the left. So 60% is equal to the decimal 0.6. It's the same thing as divided by 100. Hopefully, that's what you wrote. And you didn't say, oh, that's 0 0.06. And you got to be very careful when you're doing these things and kind of double checking yourself as you're going. So 60% as a decimal is 0 0.6. And then we're going to take that decimal, okay, and we're going to multiply by the entire volume of the cylinder, which is 45 pi. So 0 0.6 times 45 is 27. So 27 pi millimeters cubed is 60% of the volume of the cylinder. This would be considered an exact answer. Okay, so notice this is an equal sign because I have pi in here. So anytime your question says, um, that kind of quiz or test or homework, says calculate the exact answer and you're dealing with pi, leave the pi symbol alone, like 27 pi. This is exactly, precisely, 100% the correct answer. Okay, of course, we have to put it as millimeters cubed. But if uh, you're looking for an approximation, you got to use these little squiggly things, not the equal symbol. This is the approximate symbol. So this would be 27 times, and we'll use, again, for pi, 3.14. That's a rough approximation. So it's approximately 84.78 millimeters, millimeters cubed, uh, which is 60% of the volume of that cylinder. Okay, so we know we kind of covered a lot of ground here, a lot of small details that uh, a lot of students, if they go fast, uh, can forget uh, to do. But again, you know, there's some formulas that you should commit to your long-term memory. I think volume uh, of a cylinder, it's not that too difficult to um, uh, remember. So I would suggest this going into your long-term memory bank. Don't try to learn all the formulas in uh, mathematics. There's just too many, okay? But there is a good handful that you need to know. Things like the Pythagorean theorem, like a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Things like that. These are things that you definitely want to, you know, have in your back pocket without looking at your notes. But Again, that's why it's so important to take excellent math notes because there's just too much you're learning. Uh, so anyways, hopefully this little video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you need additional help with volume, uh, surface area, any of those type of things, I have two courses I want to suggest to you. Um, I cover a lot of this in my pre-algebra course. I have a full chapter on surface area, volume, area, that kind of stuff. But if you need something a little bit more advanced than that, uh, then you might want to check out my full geometry course. Again, you can find all this at my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.